Um, okay, I'm going to talk about a CARE project that we started with Nash Huber here through the No Big Prize Project Program Collaborative. And uh, it's about winter hardy carrots, and I'll talk about some of the other traits that are very important. Um, it, in this part of the world, it is possible to have overwintering carrots. You have to have a few, uh, a few things in line to make sure it happens. Uh, but we've had good success. Generally, I have found that carrots are cold hardy to, with, with some protection, they're cold hardy down to about 14, 15 degrees Fahrenheit or about minus 10 C. Um, you can see it's just about that temperature out here on that day that we're looking at carrots this particular day. This is in Squim, which is about 30, 40 miles from here as the crow flies due, due west. Um, Nash produces carrots in this, uh, in this slot because he is, at that point, the only, the only good fresh local carrots available in uh, the Seattle area for several months, essentially from November through uh, mid-February. He basically owns the show, and he's really made his mark with it. It's quite an important uh, commercial crop for him. It certainly makes uh, a lot of the cash flow in the winter, in the lean winter months. Any of you who farm or have farmed know what that's all about. Uh, but there are several parameters that make it possible for him to have this crop. And essentially, I'll tell you about where we started, all the great work that he did, and then what we are adding on to with some crosses we made. And hopefully, we'll even improve this a little bit more. And I'll come back to that photo and explain when exactly that is, and why it looks so doggone cold out there. Um, so what are the characteristics uh, that are necessary for this system? First of all, you have to have a market uh, acceptable carrot, and uh, as probably most of you know in this room, the fresh market for organic carrots generally goes with the Nance type, a blunt uh, tubular carrot, has to have good flavor, has to be sweet, and we make a distinction between flavor and sweet. We had a nice discussion about that the other day. But uh, you can have a sweet carrot with uh, relatively poor or bland flavor, and it'd still be sweet, and many people are attracted to it. But when you can put the two together, favorable, rich flavor, what I like to think of as a rich flavor and sweetness, it really wins the, wins the race. Uh, and then, of course, everybody loves a crisp carrot. And that's part of the reason that the Nance types have been so successful over the past uh, 35 years or so with the, with the specialty market. Um, now, one of the things that Nash found out very early in this, in this game, and he's been doing uh, this type of carrot for over 30 years now, and he has screened literally uh, dozens of varieties. I just say hundreds. I think that's exaggerating. But literally up in the uh, over 50, between 50 and 100 varieties. Uh, and it's taken him a long time to find the ones that work. And one of the things that really works in this system are tall tops that will compete with fall winter weeds, the so-called winter annuals especially. Chickweed is, can be a real problem here. If chickweed can also, and if you see Nash and want to talk cover crops with him, talk to him as chickweed as a cover crop. So I'll tell you what a good cover it is. It's readily sown. It's everywhere. But uh, in fact, it will swallow up winter crops if um, if left alone, and it's, again, it can be easily taken care of in most cultivation systems, but it is hard, in fact, to cultivate uh, once it gets wet and starts raining around here in, in, in earnest in October. So oftentimes the farmer can't get on the ground to cultivate, if not using herbicides. So you also need, what, what uh, Nash also found was that you need strong tops that will uh, withstand the repeated freeze-thaw events, and I'll touch on that in another slide or two here. Uh, essentially, the strong tops are, Nash does uh, anywhere from 40 to 60 acres, may fluctuate around that, uh, even a little bit more in some years. Uh, essentially, he uses an old, 
old, very appropriate technology from mid 20th century <coughs> called a Scott Viner, which is essentially a set of belts that grab you. First, you undermine the carrot, and the belts grab the carrot by the tops and pull them out of the ground. And with a set of knives at the end of the uh, belt pulley deal, it slices off the just the tops, the foliage, and drops the carrots into a bin. It's really slick, and it's it works great. Especially if you're doing this kind of acreage, you're not, you don't want to be out there and winter pulling carrots uh, by hand. Um, now, the, the other question that comes up is, are some of the varieties that he's identified, do they truly have any kind of cold resistance? How many people have ever grown carrots, left them in the ground into winter and had the crowns freeze? Had the crowns freeze and ruin it. Of course, from there, it's eventually becomes a little puddle of orange goo. Uh, well, uh, we think that one of the things that Nash does is that he tosses some soil up onto the crown of the carrots in the last couple of cultivations that he does. And that seems to insulate pretty nicely. Um, uh, but in fact, some carrots still make it through better than others. So I, whether that's a... Um, cell size issue in the crown of those carrots or whatever. We're not sure. If we, something I'd like to investigate more. Uh, and then the other thing that he's always looking for are carrots that have late initiation of the reproductive stage of the life cycle, i.e., uh, carrots, once they're getting ready to bolt in spring, ready to flower in their second year, they're biennials, of course. Uh, the two things that most people will notice is that the roots themselves get pithy, uh, the texture just gets uh, chewy, and they also then uh, will start to sprout uh, secondary or adventitious roots for their second year of growth, for the flowering. So uh, let's talk about tall tops from weed competitiveness. Uh, Nash went through a lot of varieties over the years looking for ones that had tall enough tops. Here, I hope you can see the contrast here. This was the only good large-scale field I had with short tops. On the left is uh, one of Nash's field over there in Swim, and that's Nash standing in it. And as you can see, the carrots are really uh, half, at least halfway to his waist or up to his crotch. And whereas on the, uh, on the right-hand side here, we have these are commercial carrots in a former life of mine when I was a uh, hybrid carrot breeder in the California market. These are uh, test plots in, uh, down near Raleigh, California, near El Centro, Raleigh. And if you could see my clipboard sitting there in the field, you could see if I put that clipboard up on end, it would be taller than the carrot tops. Can everybody see that? All of a sudden I found this photo again the other day and I thought, gee, that really shows it. Those are short tops. And that's most of your uh, modern emperor types that go for cut and peel, you know, the so-called baby carrots. That's how tall the tops are. That, that, those plots are ready to harvest. We were breeding carrots in that plot that day. So you can see the vast difference. They're essentially about at least uh, three times as tall. So certainly uh, throughout the season you get better weed competition. Tall top carrots also tend to be quick sprouters, uh, up and out of the ground, quick foliar growth, and compete with weeds early on in the season, which is also critical. I think in organic uh, carrot production. Um, tall top uh, varieties also tend to have, there seems to be a correlation between tall tops and stronger tops. And I've been thinking about this a lot. I think I'm going to look at this closer now in the next couple of years. Carrots basically tend to lose, part of the reason, you, well you want to, remember I said you want a strong top so you can pull it out of the ground. Uh, the large top varieties, the ones that have really substantial tall tops, also tend to have more leaves per crown. And the what happens in the cold weather is you get freezing and thawing that sloughs off the outer layers, the outer petioles of the uh, petioles of the leaf stems of the carrot leaves. And so over time you lose more and more of your critical leaves. And usually for Nash, by mid-February, uh, in some years that had more freezing and thawing events, 
he would have so little tops that any remaining carrots that he wanted to harvest for, for sale would have to be hand dug and couldn't be pulled by the Scott Miner anymore. Uh, so this was really an important thing if you can get a tall top, strong top variety, then that would um, not only, it would, it would couple the two things, which is being able to harvest, being able to harvest and also um, right until through February and hopefully into March. And then the fact that if you can find a carrot, which I'll now show you here in a second, if you can find a carrot that um, will retain its quality a little bit longer and not initiate the, the second year reproductive flowering response, then you can have a carrot that will last in the field longer essentially. So over the years, Nash identified three varieties. Here's one of his standards, Rumba, which is an OP from um, one of the Dutch companies from the 70s. And uh, it was long ago dropped. And he's been maintaining his own seed source. But it, it's got a nice, as you can see, the Nance-like shape. There's some variation in there. But believe me, there's just as much variation as this as with hybrids. Um, it has adequate size and strength of tops, uh, beautiful color, good flavor, but I'm going to cut to the bottom line here. And the thing that it, the Rumba and Nash's other carrots didn't have is they did not have the ability, and look at my second bullet point here, this very late initiation of the reproductive stage. So I found a carrot that was grown for many years in New Zealand called Spring Market that in fact has this ability hold its quality for some, sometimes four to six weeks after the normal initiation of flowering. Uh, at very tall, strong tops, but it is not the ideal shape. Uh, it takes a long time to blunt, too pointy, and it's kind of a pale color. So I'll just show you my last slide here. My time is up. That was the, We made crosses uh, with all the segregation in between see the kind of variation. We can talk about that after if anybody's interested. Uh, but essentially, we took the F1 roots, put them into pots in the greenhouse. This is how we grow carrots in the greenhouse, a single root in a single clay pot. And uh, essentially, we take carrots that are harvested in, in February after they've been screened for ability to, to go through winter. And uh, then we take them into the spring Green, spring and summer greenhouse and try to make seed in time to get back to the field in late August uh, into the outdoor nursery so we can repeat the cycle and, and put them through winter. So we've done that successfully now for a couple of uh, generations in F3s and F4s. So uh, that's where we're at and I'll turn it over to the next person.